Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. With you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who might make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading from the Old Testament, taken from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join with its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorstops and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water but roasted over fire. With its head, legs, and inner organs, you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a rem of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him 
with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful people. Alleluia. A reading from Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandments are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen to even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So on Friday morning, as I was about to hop into my truck and drive over here to the church, I looked to the end of the driveway, and there sat the Wall Street Journal. Now, I'm a bit surprised that it still keeps showing up at the end of my driveway because I don't own a subscription to the Wall Street Journal, so it must be the previous owner's subscription, but nevertheless, I've been able to add it to my continuously growing list of news sources, and it's actually provided some eye-opening material for me. On that day, there happened to be an article in the, in the Wall Street Journal that 
set me back a little bit. And the article said something that I'm, if I'm being honest with myself, I probably have already known but have not wanted to believe. That article said this, it said a growing number of Americans regard their political opponents not as fellow citizens with somebody who they disagree with, but as outright enemies. Now here's the more disheartening part, the part that that choked me up just a bit. The article went on to say that people consider their enemies politically, socially, and even morally irredeemable. Wow, that's strong language. I can understand how you might consider somebody to be an enemy, but to say that they're irredeemable, I'll never understand that. If you're like me, you've learned that God has the power and the grace to redeem all of God's children. Now, there was a bit of good news in that article. For those of you who might have seen it, after all, you will know that it was written by two priests, an Episcopalian priest and a Jesuit priest. And the article was entitled, A First Step Towards Loving Our Neighbors, or actually A First Step Towards Loving Our Enemies. Now, at the heart of the article was the call and the need for communities of faith to be models of reconciliation for the people outside of the church walls. That's not dissimilar to what Jesus is asking of us in our own gospel reading for this morning. Now, the priest's solution to do that work of reconciliation was to take a, a, a note out of our liturgical playbook and learn how to be creatively about passing the peace to others out there in the world. And I quote from the article, with prayer and imagination, we can find ourselves uh, We can find countless ways for ourselves to exchange the peace with one another because the peace is a simple act of reconciliation and provides a way for reducing polarization. Now, to be clear, the priests are not wrong in their thinking. In fact, what they're offering as a solution to begin doing that work of reconciliation is perhaps even easier than what Jesus asked of us in that gospel this morning. Remember, Jesus says that if somebody sins against you, confront that person. And if that person doesn't want to believe you, then bring that person in front of two other people. And then if they still don't believe you, then confront them in front of the entire church. I don't know about you, but I think that would be pretty hard for me to do myself. But to offer the peace, that's a way for us to simply acknowledge each other as children of God, to say, I see you, to say, I understand you, to say, I love you. However, I happen to believe there's something even easier for us to do, a first step even before the peace, and it's something that the article mentioned but didn't elaborate on, and something that relates back to what we began talking about this week, and something that, yes, appears in scriptures from last week and this week and beyond. The article stated that for the Christian tradition, truth is ultimately a person, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And because of this, truth is someone encountered in love and not something to be yielded as a weapon. Truth, my friends, is someone encountered in love. And because, as we learned from our scriptures last week, that we are made in God's image and therefore we are made to be love, I believe that our first steps towards bringing reconciliation to a hurting world is really to be what we were made to be, like I said last week, to be that love that the world needs. Sure, the passing of the peace can be one form of that. But remember, if that passing of the peace is not authentically filled with that love, then our efforts to bring about reconciliation to a hurting world will be for naught. And you must be wondering to yourselves, well, that's great, Selden, but I think it's a little bit harder to do than you're saying, so I need a start. I need a starting point. Where do I begin? It is hard to do. I admit that. But I think I have a jumping off point for us. Now, most of you probably know that Bishop Curry, presiding Bishop Curry, is asking us to live into a new way of life that he's called the way of love. 
It's a way for us to learn how to practice the ways and teachings and actions of Jesus in our everyday lives. And the driving question behind that, that way of love that Bishop Curry has asked us to reflect on is this, what does love ask of us? What does love require us to do? That's where we start. That's our driving question. What does love require us to do? That question not only helps us to build that theological imagination, but that question helps us to remember who we are, what we are made of, what we are called to do, and how we're called to react to the things that are going on out in the world that are constantly stirring around us, that are filling our plates. And it's no secret that we've got a lot on our plates right now, especially as we head towards the election. And so I ask you to reflect on that. Think about it. What does love require us to do? Talk about it in your Bible studies here at church. Talk about it with your friends. Write about it in your vestry reports. Think about it over and over again. Last week, we learned the kind of love that we're made to be. This week, we begin that hard work of reflecting on what that love requires us to do. The great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said something in a sermon that I will never forget and will probably bring up from time to time again in my sermons because it's just that powerful. Jeff, just after telling stories about the many phone calls that he received where death threats were on the other end of the receiver and about bricks coming through his home window, he had this to say, and I paraphrase, I don't have to like my enemies. I don't have to like what they do. I don't have to like what they think. I don't have to like what they say. But I do have to love them. And I have to love them because that is what God asked me to do. If I were a betting man, my friends, and I promise you I'm not, but if I were, I'd bet that Dr. King, if he were here today, he'd say that, Loving his enemies was probably the hardest thing he ever had to do, but I'd also bet he say it was completely worth it. Completely worth it, and if I may be so bold, because I believe that it helped him to imagine, to imagine, I, sorry, I, I believe that it helped him to imagine that dream of dreams that he went on to dream. It helped him to imagine that, that, Despite the evil intentions of some people in the world, every person has some good in him. I, help, I believe it helped him to imagine that each and every child of God is worthy of redemption. I believe it will help us to imagine that his dream, that dream of dreams, is still possible today if we continuously and constantly ask ourselves, what does love ask us to do? If another member of the church sins against you, before you respond, ask yourself, what does love require me to do in this moment? If your neighbor does something that you don't agree with, before you take action against that neighbor, ask yourself, what does love require me to do right now? If you have a dispute with a family member or with a friend, whether it be over a political discussion or something that you saw on TV or who's going to win the Tour de France, ask yourself before you lose that friend, before that friend becomes an enemy, ask yourself, what does love require me to do right now? What does love require us to do? That is the question that we must continuously be asking ourselves. That should be the still small voice in the back of our mind and the heart of our hearts that should be the driving force behind our theological imagination. Because at the end of the day, my friends, what we are really called to owe each and every person is not just the peace, it's not just goodwill, but as St. Paul reminds us and Jesus reminds us over and over again, is love. Love that is from God love that we are made of, love that has the power to begin that work of re reconciliation to heal a hurting world, but it only has the power to do that if we constantly ask ourselves with each waking moment, what does that love require us to do? 
Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, friends and, and neighbors, neighbors, and, and for, for those, those who are alone, alone. for this community, the nation and the world, for all who work, work for, for justice, justice freedom, freedom, and, and peace. peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of the hunger, hunger, fear, injustice, and, justice, and, and oppression. oppression, for William, Eric, Sue, Joan, Travis, those impacted by Hurricane Laura and all infected with the coronavirus and their families, Please remember our military family and friends, and we pray for all healthcare workers, Kyle, Lauren, Jessica, Mara, and Janice, and for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for, for all who proclaim, proclaim the gospel, gospel and, and all, all who seek, seek the, the truth. truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, Selden, our rector, and for all bishops and other ministers. For, for all, all who serve God, God in his church. church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord for your mercy, mercy is great. great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise Amen. your name forever Amen. and ever. We pray for all who have died and all who have died from COVID-19, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put, put their, their trust, trust in, in you. you. O God, the Father of all, whose Son commanded us to love our enemies, lead them and us from prejudice to truth. 
Deliver them and us from hatred, cruelty, and revenge. And in your good time, enable us all to stand reconciled before you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters, my brothers, my friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Good morning. As noted in the Friday Gram and on Facebook, we are doing Thanksgiving live for the Thanksgiving basket. Um, this month, uh, for the month of September, your Thanksgiving offerings will go to Episcopal Relief and Development to support those, especially those who are dealing with the consequences of Hurricane Laura. From Courtney Harris. Thankful for the teachers, staff, and administration at local schools for their efforts to welcome students at open houses, especially York Middle and York High. From Carolyn Griffith, prayers and thanksgivings for teachers, school employees, and students of all ages. Faye Keenan, thankful for two wonderful eye evaluations in August showing improved vision and a healing retina. God is so good. Linda Williams is so grateful to have been led to and to discover the depths of the Episcopal Church. And Belinda and Faye are very delighted that they have gotten to know her as well. From Suzanne Poteet, for our son Benjamin's first birthday, I saw the party pictures that he's adorable. Um, and also from Faye Keenan, she's so glad that she got to meet Linda Williams when she was working in the bookstore. So for all of these things, we give thanks. Few quick announcements. You might have read them in the Friday Gram, but just a qu some quick updates because if you haven't fully read your Friday Gram, you'll miss it. And we want you here at, to engage. After this service, there is no coffee hour. We will resume them on a monthly basis now on the last Sunday of the month. So September 27th, um, there will be an online coffee hour after this service. However, if you'd like to get to know Selden, he's having open office hours virtually on Tuesdays from 1 to 2. The information to connect to him that way is in your Friday gram, or you can also check with the office and they can help you. Tonight, our evening gathering is moving from 6 p.m. to 5 p.m. If you come at 6, you'll have missed it. So, and we're shifting from doing this, the order of Compline and a, a fellowship gathering to doing an evening prayer service. So come at five. It's looking like it's going to be another beautiful evening. And bring your chair, bring something to snack on if you want. And of course, wear your mask and come join us for evening prayer in the churchyard at 5 p.m. tonight and for every Sunday in September, weather permitting. One other note, those of you might, who have kept track that we're actually in September now, and that the weekend of Labor Day is normally our last Sunday of our summer schedule. We are going to keep it for a few more weeks, so this service will continue to be streamed at 10 for several more weeks. However, 
Next Sunday, we will be offering it in the form of a Rite One service as a nod since the, 10, since the 1120 service won't be resuming its gathering next week, as is customary. We will do Rite One as our live stream service. So we invite all of you to enjoy the richness of this older text liturgy. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. Our Eucharistic prayer continues with prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life, and you made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. 
And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask that your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Now we continue with our invitation to spiritual communion. Jesus, with all the faithful who gather in your holy name this day, we join in praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. We believe that you are truly present in this bread and this wine. We believe that in your goodness you unite us wherever we are as one body. Although we cannot physically gather at this time, we pray that you come into our hearts and join us with you and with one another in bonds of love. In this holy moment, I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom in unending peace. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us now continue with our post-communion prayer. Lord of the feast, we thank you for gathering us as your people. We call to remembrance the many times we have been fed at your table, and we lament our distance now. Be present, Lord Jesus, as you were present with your disciples. Be known to us in the breaking of the bread, and may your Holy Spirit sustain us and all your church until we can gather together again. We ask this for the sake of your love. Amen. God of wisdom, we give you thanks for the schools and classes and for the teachers and students who fill them each day. We thank you for the new beginning, for new books and new ideas. We thank you for sharpened pencils, pointy crayons, and crisp blank pages waiting to be filled. We thank you for the gifts of making mistakes and trying again. Help us to remember that asking the right question is often as important as giving the right answer. Today we give you thanks for these, your children, and we ask you to bless them with curiosity, understanding, and respect. May their backpacks be a sign to them that they have everything they need to learn and grow this year in school and in Sunday school. May they be guided by your love. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, who as a child in the temple showed his longing to learn about you. And as an adult taught by story and example, your great love for us. Amen. My friends, remember that life is short and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who traveled away with us. So be quick to be kind, make haste to love. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.